Hey guys, New Dangs here. Now, as I said, let's take a look at the Temple of Night figure from Mythic Legions. Now, I actually just ordered two of these. This is the very first figure I bought. And then I just had these two arrive. Now, you might be wondering, where's his head? If I can actually get it to stand up. Of course I can't. <laughs> Great start. There we go. Nope, I'm just going to hold it. See, so yeah, I had these two arrive. Both missing their heads, and there's a reason for that, which we will get into. But first, let's take a look at some of the details on this figure. Now, this was the line. I say the line. This was actually the figure that made me want to start collecting Mythic Legions. I had this vision of having an amazing Templar army. And as you can see, these do look wonderful. Absolutely amazing. Now, before we get into the meat of the uh, review, shall we do the accessories just to get them over and done with? And then I'll explain why they're missing the heads. So, all of them will come with this amazing shield. It has the little handle instead of like the little wrist hook thing that the very original Mythic Legions came with, which I prefer personally. I find you have a bit more adaptability with the shield. I also find that they don't. Clipping them onto the wrist all the time would like scuff the paint. This completely resolves that. So that's one thing. They all come with your standard longsword, gold pommel, gold handle, standard blade, and your pauldrons, which as you can see I've got one on this figure, none on this one, and then on this one I've put both of them, which all of them will have pauldrons. It's just I'm trying to show you the, I say trying to show you as one of them isn't in frame, Trying to show you the different looks you can get with these figures. As he stands up by himself, of course he does. <clears throat> so here are the Poldrons. Very nice figures. And obviously being silver and gold, these will also fit with any other things you've got. So for example, they would fit with, off the top of my head, a uh, Sir Owain. I believe he's silver and gold, and any other figures you have that. Have that match, you get these, and if you don't want to use them, and you like the sort of standard, basic Templar look, these are spare. Pop in your other figures, make it a little custom. Okay, so, as I was saying, they uh, obviously did come with their helmets, which I have one here, which I'll give you a close to follow, actually. Should have got out of the bag beforehand. But that is the helmet. As I drop it, fantastic. That's the helmet. Little neck peg. And of course, the little horn. Again, if you don't like your Templars, you can always use this for something else because these little things do pop out, as I'll show you. Actually, this one's really stiff, so I haven't heated them up. Well, they're really stiff, so I won't. But this little section here, the little spike, does pop out. So if you just want to have a bucket helmet, you're more than welcome to. Now, the reason these guys have no heads is because I actually have these two custom heads. It came with the figures. Um, I got this set off of eBay. So not only did the figures come complete, but I also got these two very custom heads, which I believe are from a guy called Camera Dude, 1967 off the top of my head. Something along the lines of that. Could have butchered it, but I was actually just looking at these anyway, because um, I want my Templars to be unique. And then I saw these and I was like, this is amazing. I mean, the paint application is fantastic. Way better than anything I could do. This one, unfortunately, does have a few little scuffs on it. But when you get 3D printed items and then have them painted, you don't expect it to be factory quality in terms of, like, quality control or durability. Like, these are, in my opinion, art pieces. And then this was another head. Again, this was one that I was spying on. I've got a few other heads of his that I'm uh, interested in buying. You've got your, I believe it's called green stuff, uh, to keep the head in place. And yeah, just amazing, like, the detail on the hair alone. Just insane. But yeah, that, and then they just pop on. Scales perfectly. Both of them look insane. And there you go. I've now got three very different looking Templars for my shelf. Okay, so now let's get into the meat of the review for why you're all here. Let's remove this dude, and you can take a back seat for a moment as well. 
and we'll look at articulation and scaling. So, as I move all this junk out of the way, the arms go up and down. We have a single joint at the elbows on both sides. You have your wrist swivel and you have your forearm swivel. Your neck with the helmet will do the same thing, so it goes side to side and there's only a little bit of up and down, mainly because I'm using the bigger neck guard, which is just here. There is a small one, which is this one, just plugs into the back using that little bit there and that'll give you a lot more uh, accessibility with it. We have up and down, because it's on a ball peg, which is always nice. Legs go up, about that high. They also go out quite far. So, you know, if you want to have him doing karate kicks, he's your dude. We have single jointed elbow, single elbows, these and these. My uh, anatomy lessons are off to the right side. Single jointed knees. We have your ankles, which do this. And that is all for articulation, I believe. I don't see much else. Now, I will have a kit bash video coming up where we'll look into how these figures break down, because that's always something that I'm very intrigued with, how the figures look, uh, how the pieces look. Because I find that you can't really... <clears throat> if you're buying a figure for a custom, it's hard to see how the figure how the parts of the figure will look when they're connected to a thing it's meant to be on. I find that when I see the figure broken down, it helps me sort of piece together like, that part would be good for this, that part would be good for that. So we'll have a kit bash video coming up, but we'll look at that. Okay, now let us look at scaling. So, that is our Templar Knight. And this is him, next to the McFarlane Toys Witcher figure. As you can see, they scale pretty nicely together. Um, they are about the same height. Which is always nice, especially if you've got the big monsters. Um, if you want to buy the Mythic Legion's Trolls or something, or you want to just have the Witcher fight Chrono or something. There you go. And the Mattel Becky Lynch figure, as you can see. Quite a noticeable size difference there. So yeah, that is the Mythic Legion's Templar figure. Again, if you are looking at getting into this line and you like Templars or knights of that kind, this is honestly a great figure to start with. Um, I do find they are more expensive than most figures on the secondary market, especially in the UK, because um, of how popular they are, which does suck. I think I have spent on these three figures, I think I have spent about 230 to 240 pounds. Yeah, they're around £80 each, I find, which sucks, but in my opinion, is worth it. Um, it's £80 I'm not going to spend on something else, so why not? But as I was saying, if this is a figure that you, or if this is one that you're debating getting into, um, definitely pick these up. They are quite expensive, as I've said over here, but 100% worth it. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed this review. Drop a like on the video if you have. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. We will be doing other figure lines as well. Uh, it's just Legions are by far my favourite and the thing that I enjoy only looking into and buying the most, but also talking about the most. So please subscribe for more. Hopefully, see you in the next one. Bye, guys.